Hi there, it's Anthony from Evolution Series. I'm back after a little uh, video break. I haven't really done a video in uh, quite some time, but there is a good reason. I've actually been hard at work on uh, exciting new sample library endeavors. One of which is a beauty. I really, really am proud of this one. I have been working with my wonderful friends at Native Instruments and it really is a creative adventure. I think the simplest way to describe it is that we wanted to take what we've uh, learnt and done from Laws, this textural adventure of sound, focusing on more uh, regional world instruments with a bit of a, a little bit of a blend of Western sounds for good measure. But we want, we needed to kind of not be better than laws, but we just wanted to find some different journey to go on, another new sonic palette to kind of work with. And I guess we felt sticking to a more Western instrument choice, a more classical orchestral context was fun with a few kind of interesting um, bits that are sort of non-traditional, but not so much focusing on the world, but more of a classical context. And the other thing uh, that was pretty cool about this new library <clears throat> is that Laws, we were focusing on solo musicians primarily, whereas the new library called Fables, we are, we were working with ensembles, groups of uh, three, four musicians, up to groups of six. Uh, there were a couple of soloists in there, but um, mostly it was ensembles, which was pretty cool. And for me, that was awesome. I've always wanted to uh, dive more into that land of groups of musicians kind of working off each other. I didn't want to go for massive ensembles. Um, I just wanted to get, say, three virtuoso players in a room just kind of working off each other so we can kind of get that emotion so it's it's not massive but it's not small either and it and it's enough to kind of still hear the soloistic nature of each musician yet they somehow are cohesive in their playing they, they glue together and that was amazing it was really really lovely so I, as far as instrument choices once again, we have, um, like Laws, we've got 16 categories. And uh, so we've got our string ensemble, so we've got cello ensemble, double bass on solo, so ensemble, we've got um, the violin ensemble, and then we have French horn ensemble, low brass ensemble, low winds ensemble, uh, then we're diving into choir, so we've got uh, female choir, six piece, male choir, six piece, and then we've got uh, like a tuned percussion category, which is really, really lovely, and then we've got a um, kind of low percussion category, which is like orchestral bass drums, timpanis, that kind of jazz, and <clears throat> then we've also got the uh, sort of cymbals, gongs, all that kind of nice metallic uh, atonal percussion, which is lovely. And then as far as soloistic, we've got uh, the bass flute, which is an awesome instrument, so cinematic, so moody. And ambient guitar, so that's a bit of a quirky one. We got this amazing water phone. It's a huge beast of a thing. It was it was massive. It was beautifully made one, and man, it sounds haunting. Really, really great. So we've got that, and then we have another couple of categories from memory. Um, pads, uh, amazing sound designer, Jonathan Sharp. He did a brilliant job on that one. So we sampled a lot of pads and created those and then some sound effects in a cool sound effects category atonal 
interesting sorts of sounds. So the idea is that you can kind of take all these beautiful organic sounds and combine them with some interesting pads or atonal sound effects and uh, kind of hear how they glue together. It's, it's very, very cool. The, the possibilities are endless. Um, and within each category, there is a lot of different articulations, a lot of highly detailed articulations. Um, you could just be, uh, you know, aside from all the kind of global presets that we've created, you could just be loading up individual instruments and diving in and playing individual articulations and just getting a lot of um, creative value out of that. So, look, I mean, I could be talking forever on this instrument, but I think the best thing is that we just dive on in, have a good play, hear some of the sounds. I won't be playing every sound because there's a lot, uh, I'll just go through, I'll try not to speak so much, I'll just go through and have a bit of a general play and just move on through and see how we go. I, I won't spend much time on the interface because Native Instruments have a lovely video that really goes through all that detail, but I'll just do a very quick run through of the different pages without explaining every detail and yeah. Let's dive on in, and I hope you have a bit of fun along the way. Cheers. So, as you can see, we have our instrument. Uh, like laws, you've got your three instrument categories. So you can load a different instrument here. Up the top, you've got your global presets, some different controls down the bottom, bit of reverb. If you want to add a bit of room noise, you can, or bit of e an EQ boost and so forth. Uh, you've got expression. This uh, controls the um, any any uh, preset that is set up in a way where you are crossfading between different articulations. So you can have up to three different articulations. So you use your expression controller to kind of morph between one to the next to the next, which is great. So you you definitely want to get to know this. Expression is your friend. So uh, I think that's an important one. Mod wheel, that's just a simple overall volume controller there. And then as we go over to here, now this is actually another interesting change that we've done. So Unlike Laws, Fables, we've added the addition of polyphonic aftertouch. So this is something quite uh, quite cool and not so common in contact libraries. Uh, but like if you have a rolly keyboard or any polyphonic keyboard, you can actually use this feature. Um, if you don't, it doesn't matter. You still get um, a lot of creative value. This is just like the uh, cherry on the top, I, I guess. So, so what it does is that if you're not familiar with polyphonic aftertouch, so your traditional keyboard, you press down a note and then that's it. You know, you've got velocity depending on how hard you press, how loud it plays back, that kind of thing. Um, with polyphonic aftertouch, you press down the note to max and then there's just like this little bit of extra buffer to press, you can go down that little bit more and that sends a, like the polyphonic uh, aftertouch mini messages to contact and then you'll be able to get this extra effect. Now depending on how uh, each preset has been set up, like this one here, we're using, you can see each of the three instruments loaded, we're using um, volume and in one of them a bit of a cutoff, um, filter cutoff. So when you press that extra little bit beyond, you'll get like, you can add a little bit of a volume swell. And uh, sometimes you might have a, you know, you can use pan or pitch or modulate or motion or rate and depth. There's a lot of things that you can do. So it's, it's a bit of a creative, uh, you know, um, a creative box of interest there. So it's definitely worth exploring if you have one. Otherwise, it's not a big deal if you don't. But it is fun. <laughs> Trust me, it's fun. Okay, so that's the general advanced settings. And then each one here, you've got your each instrument. This is where you load your articulations. And each one of these, you've got a 
your various uh, controls there. Now, as I said, I won't be going into details on how to use all that because you've got another overview video that does that. So let's just dive in now and have a good old play. We'll go into the global presets. I've just set a star here there's a there's a ton there's a lot of them so if you click out here there's 270 presets so that's a bunch so i'm just going to go here and we'll go through just some categories we've got three uh, four categories i should say we've got classical hybrid air and tails so let's just start from the beginning and have a play i don't remember what each one of these are but let's just have a go and and see what they do we just need to wait for each thing to load here So you could hopefully hear what I was trying to do there. I was using expression to morph between different articulations there. So this was a combination of low brass ensemble, French horn ensemble, and double bass ensemble. And we were kind of running between the different articulations. So, so you can really create a lot of uh, kind of nice dynamics and movement between it all because every articulation is very lively we have the key with this thing is wasn't to create a standard kind of sustained sample library we wanted everything to have life and swell and movement and musicians just kind of working off each other we didn't want everyone to be the same it needed to be all a little bit uh kind of varied a little bit unpredictable but yet combined and I think that was the key with it so it's pretty cool so let's just keep moving onwards this one here is violin ensemble cello ensemble and double bass ensemble okay so let's start on the lower one Love the sound of these uh, these strings. There, there's just something raw but 
full sounding about it. And yeah, I really, really am over the moon with how they turned out. So that one there was going morphing between kind of a normale with swells and vibrato into, say, a more like a, a trill, a major trill flicker, which is quite nice. What's this one? Okay, low brass, French horn ensemble, and double bass ensemble. So let's see what we have here. There we go, bit of a, it was a little bit of a scary bends and some kind of random shorts and circular bowing and just hearing those blends of different articulations it really opens up a, a world of possibilities. Okay, Ethereal Whispers. Okay, oh this one is Normale to a bit of a Salpont vibe and then with a bit of a Normale articulation there, so this is once again using a string ensemble approach. So you can really hear how they go when they musicians move into that sulpon area. It gets that kind of it's a bit raw, it's a bit scratchy. It's uh, it's really really cool. I really do love sulpon. <laughs> it's one of my uh, favorite techniques on the strings. Okay, so keep moving on. Harmonic journey. Okay, so this is focusing on, as the title says, harmonics. This is pretty cool. Okay, with a bit of, uh, there's a bit of circular bowing in there for good measure. Very eerie. 
Okay, let's keep going on. Mournful cries. Okay. So string ensemble again. This was an interesting technique actually, it uh, makes you feel a bit seasick really, but what we ended up doing is we got all the musicians to start on pitch and then randomly, so they weren't all doing it at the same time, they would kind of go slightly out and then back up again and then out and back up again and the speed variations would not be linear, it wouldn't be all the same, they would be kind of speeding up, slowing down, kind of just getting into that um, rhythm of things, I suppose. And everyone, each musician was doing it their own kind of speed. That was very, very cool. Just hearing how they all kind of took it. And then once you bring everything together, it just sounds fantastic. It sounds really, really cool. Yeah, so let's keep moving on. Quirky Quest. So this one here, okay. So firstly, just be warned. This library is not so much about the shorts, it's about more sustaining textures. That's the key kind of important thing here. But I did grab a handful of uh, short techniques, which, you know, they, they do sound very, very cool. Um, but they're more, let's call them a bonus, a bonus technique. So this one here is just a simple pits across a, across a you know, string ensemble and a bit of a stick tap if you, you know, play the velocity a bit louder. So there's just something very, very detailed. So another cool thing that I've, I'm really, really trying to do with, with my sample projects is I like to keep as much of the pre-attack of the sample there as possible. Because if you kind of think of it, if we get rid of that pre-attack, you lose some of that kind of air before the note comes in and they always end up can sound a little bit too truncated and I, I think they sound way way more lively by keeping a bit of that. It might not be as instant responding as some other approaches but I do find the realism jumps up way more doing it this way. So let's keep moving on. Relentless Spirits. Oh another string type one. Okay. Circular bowing into collegno dragged. Let's have a look.
I really love those uh, double bass. There's just that girth. Really wanted to capture that low end resonance, that guttural feeling. I think is really important. You know, especially with those double bass players. They're amazing, beautiful instruments, and sound. Really, really cool. Rough C, scary bends, horns, and so forth. Let's have a look. really moody you can just imagine how they could be used in a really cool film score moment okay the rain repeated pits and flutando Yeah, it really does feel like rain or the those random pits. It's even though it, nothing's really set to a particular tempo, because they're all slightly happening at different points, it all feels cohesive in an interesting way. Okay, velvet strings. Okay, oh okay, so this one here is like a normale that goes into a bit of a salpont random tremolo, which is nice. Very cool. Okay, on to a little bit of a hybrid category here. Just having a bit of a listen. So one other little thing that we've 
done with uh, fables, which is a little bit different to Laws, is that we've included a lot more atonal sounds here. So there'll be some global presets that combine atonal techniques like SFX or low percussion with, say, in this case, violin ensemble. So you can kind of get a few different uh, kind of textures that way. One of the things to bear in mind with anything atonal, uh, we've had to do some scripting trickery here to make sure that, uh, you know, you're not doubling up on the same sound many, many times because it sounds a bit uh, a bit bad, really. Uh, I guess consider it this way. Let's say you've got a, say, violin ensemble. In this case, we've got harmonics, which you might want to play chords and many notes, hold a bunch of notes down. Now then, if you lay a, say, low percussion bass drum hit or a roll or something like that, um, you don't want that bass drum hit or roll to be happening every time you're playing a note because then all it's doing is it's doubling up on the same thing over and over and over again, and it just sounds all weird, phasey, and strange. So we had to do some creative scripting to take that into consideration, that the first note you hit, the atonal stuff starts playing, and then you play the other notes, but the other notes are only playing the, say, the violin ensemble, the tonal, the tonal things, but the atonal will be happening on the first note. Now, in order to get another atonal hit happening, you've got to release everything and back down again on, you know, and then it will play again. So it's just getting used to the way it works, but really I, I think it works quite nicely. So let's have a little look here. I was getting a feeling some sort of fifth element vibes there actually for a moment. So that one there was kind of um, using expression to cross fade into some different layers. And I believe it was cross fading into a different SFX articulation there. So which was kind of nice. Okay, let's keep moving along. Okay, we have ambient guitar, bass flute and French horn ensemble. So that was an interesting combination. Next one, Beach Houses, Ambient Guitar, Violin Ensemble and Pads. This one is just purely triggered by velocity.
Yeah, that's uh, using some nice ambient guitar harmonics, which is cool. One thing I did forget to mention, I believe, is that the pads and SFX, we treated them a little bit differently to what a lot of uh, sample libraries, you know, uh, when they use pads and F SFX. We wanted to make them a little bit more organic, and one of the tricks we ended up doing was uh, reamping the actual recorded pads and SFX out of big high fidelity speakers into the same room we recorded the live musicians. So on the uh, on the the VR stage here, you can actually drag these around left and right and move the pads or SFX within the virtual space just as you can the organic instruments. And it really is pretty cool. So you can kind of make them sound a bit more further back within a room naturally or closer depending on what you want. It really adds another level of um, flexibility, which is fun. Okay, let's keep looking. Big sky, more ambient guitar. That's pretty cool. That's using, uh, I believe, modulation there to kind of create that interesting kind of uh, movement there. Dark Secrets. Okay, we're using some strings combined with some pads. Okay, let's see what this is doing. So there it was kind of this going from organic when moving the expression into something that's a little bit more synthetic organic, if you know what I mean. Okay, delicate symmetry. Let's have a look here. Ambient guitar and pads. Some interesting uh, movement happening on that one too. Earthbound. Let's see that. Okay, Echoing Dreams.
really do love that ambient guitar. It's always been something I've wanted to do and especially reamp a an electric guitar in a big space. I think that is part of the magic as you get this natural reverberation of the room with the kind of close affected ambient guitar sound which is great and if you want to get even more ambient there's some great post-production tricks you can do I mean one effect um, I like using is a bit of a cheat but it's black hole and you can stick that on anything and it's instant ambientness uh, you know grandness there so I would say that's another cool trick if you want it just even kind of sound bigger but just alone this is a, a brilliant sound Airy dissonance. Okay. I think this was one of the techniques that was absolutely was, sounded amazing on the day. It was so, but I could I kept cracking up laughing throughout it all because when the ladies did it, it sounded brilliant, and then when the the men came in to do it, it sounded awesome. But it just because they were singing so low, they're doing this mm -hmm, mm -hmm, just reminded me of cows mooing for some reason. I, I just couldn't get that out of my head. So every time I was listening to this technique, I just kept picturing cows in a and a paddock but when you stack it all together it just sounds out just so out there Okay, let's keep moving on. Sorry, dad joke. Um, foggy memories. Okay, bass, bass flute. Waterphone and female choir. Let's see what we've got here. Forest Breeze. We're using tune percussion, so Tibetan bowls and drones and bass flute and cello ensemble. A nice little blend. Let's have a look. Very moody.
Gentle Mist. Ambient guitar again with some pads and SFX. <laughs> That's cool. Let's go on. Ghostly Rhythms. Okay, we have female choir, male choir, and low percussion. Pretty cool. I'll play just one note, that way you can kind of hear what's happening a little bit better. You can kind of hear this weird um, kind of uneasy sort of sound in the background. That's actually a, a bit of a chest thump where they're going like that kind of thing, um, but way better than me doing it. Um, but it almost sounds like a zombie apocalypse going on when you start blending in these strange sounds. So as you're bringing up the expression, you can you bring in that zombiness into the sound, which is pretty cool. Moving on. More choir and low percussion. Kind of hear the subtle uh, roars of the low percussion there in the background. Okay, this next one. Violin Ensemble, SFX and Pads.
interesting uh, movement happening. Slowly to sleep. Okay. <laughs> So we've got some low winds, ensembles combined with cello and pads, so it's kind of an interesting concoction there. Whale voice. There's some really cool things happening there with the ambient guitar. So we've got like um, Ebo, kind of w random vibrato, repeated sustains. We're just going sort of this kind of Morse Cody style of playing with a like a, a bending sustain that goes from the root note, bends down and back up to the sustain again. And with pads and the SFX going, it, it really adds this kind of lively kind of feel. I, I really, really like that. Okay, into the air category, which is kind of more focusing on like brass and wind based instruments, since the, type, the title air. So I guess that's the, the key. Let's have a just a bit of a play. So that's kind of uh, the French horn ensemble is the, the key kind of hero there, but with a few other interesting sparkles around it. Blue moods. So we've got low winds and low brass. So this is quite a subtle, warmer sounding thing, but with a little bit of that flutter and scary bends just to kind of add a little unease to the texture. OK, 
Okay, bass flute and low winds with some pads. A lot of girth going on there with the the low winds too, and the bass flute are doing these uh, timbral trills, which is just when you're kind of moving in between the harmonics, harmonic overtones of a note. It's very very nice. Uh, next one, ah, choir, ah, lovely choir. So here we're going, moving between like a random wow kind of articulation into random Latin gibberish type thing. was tremendous it was a uh, actually that was one of my uh, bucket list things to do as a sample developer is to work with groups of singers together I mean I've worked with a lot of singers over the years but having a choir and just like an amazing amazing choir and just working with capturing these sorts of textual articulations was definitely a dream come true for me so we'll keep moving on here, Coded Whispers. That's a more atonal technique. So playing chords, you don't really notice the difference as much. It's just more of a interesting concoction of atonal choir whispers with SFX and a few pad-like textures. Okay, we're going to a new one called Crop Circles. Choir again with pads. This one we did this technique um, so it's a little bit spooky
once again, we're, we're using the old uh, chest thump articulation there. It's kind of a cool one. Okay, dramatic peaks. Okay, I think these ones here are bonus shorts, but for brass. Once again, you know, this library is more about sustaining textures. So any short notes are just consider them a bonus, okay? Okay, dynamic reflections. Ah, okay, epic horn type thing. So French horns, low brass, and some pads. something quite full and deep. Actually, the interesting thing I found when recording the brass, and this was a learning experience for me too, that playing that Mikado, the loud, growly, kind of distorted, but natural, organic, distorted sound that we all know and love and, you know, when brass kick in, it's actually really difficult for the musicians to do. Well, difficult in the sense of doing that a lot and for a long period of time. Their embouchure, which is their mouth positioning on the instrument, just tires out really, really quickly. And even if you're using the best of the best musicians, there's a point of no return. So we had to be very, very careful and considerate to uh, not killing the musicians off too quickly when working with them. So we had to kind of balance in some of the techniques and give their lips a bit of a break. So do some of the stronger, you know, Mikado, growlier ones, and then give them a break and give them some more of the softer ones. And that we kind of that way gave their time, gave time for their embouchure, their lips to recover, to be able to cope with more, I guess, <laughs> you know, punishment. But I'm so glad that we did it because it, it sounds awesome. Okay, let's keep looking. Choir. Okay, we've got the bendy ms again here with some wows and other things. And a little bit of random random gibberish there for good measure. Okay, more low brass, Mikado, but this time we've got some added swells and other things combined.
you can kind of hear some of the sustainy, wavy kind of techniques of the instruments happening after the Mikado swell, which is nice. Okay, Everlasting Lights, Bass Flute, Low Winds, SFX. Grim Resonance. kind of here as you're kind of moving between uh, some of the articulations it's going from it's still overall quite crazy and busy and hectic but it's going from a more subtle crazy and busy and hectic to a bit more kind of bigger into the abyss some nice ooh ah bendy coral like things So we're here you can actually go from a more kind of clean, simple, swelly ooh-ah and as you move the expression into this bendy, kind of tense, uneasy ooh-ah technique. Here we've got another interesting technique. This is kind of a random gliss on voice. It's easier to kind of hear, hear it. So. I think this will go from an ER, and as I move the expression up, it will then go onto the gliss.
really feels very outer worldly that one. Resonant drama, more choir. got a nice attacking Mikato at the beginning there and then with a sustaining note that follows quite dramatic secret glow okay so here we've got some random da da techniques and mysterious. Shadow Vortex. More Latin with uh, chest thump. So you can go from like a clean Latin sound into the chest thump. Shadow whispers. So there's variations, it's amazing, like even though you might be hearing that there are some similar techniques like the zizzing and the bends and things, but how, when you blend them in different ways or create different ways of going from clean to, you know, like a simpler version of just say only the bends and then you as you bring the expression up into the zizzes, random zizzes, um, you know, there are so many different ways you can set these things up and they can... In doing so, it can give quite a unique and, uh, you know, a different experience to using the same sounds. And I, I think uh, that's also very handy. Moving on here, Sinister Dreams. <laughs>
subtle wind. hear all the interesting little trill techniques, random trills happening there. Okay, so let's move on to tails. B horror. So some of these are a little bit more atonal in nature. That's pretty cool. With some of these sounds, I mean, actually all of them, there's poly aftertouch. So here I've got a little rolly in front of me. If I press a key, So it kind of actually adds another level of um, creativity there. So you've got kind of a, as you press harder, that kind of modulating wah, 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 sort of sound changes, it slows down, becomes less, and as you bring it back out, it speeds up again, and then you might have some subtle pitch vari variations happening there too. So there's some really interesting stuff that goes on when you're playing around with poly aftertouch. We, we had uh, three full days of percussion. The place was just chookers full of percussion. We got these, uh, what they call friction mallets, which are great. Um, we got very, like, lots of different sizes, big ones to small ones. And the idea is, is that you have a big drum, let's say a timpani or orchestral bass drum, and then you get this friction mallet and you run it around on the skin with a little bit of pressure and then it kind of creates this sort of the skin starts to vibrate and because the drum's quite big you get this nice kind of growling technique and it really creates almost like a weird wounded creature from out of this world and uh, you can do this technique on gongs and cymbals and all sorts of things and it just is tremendous so we spent days just kind of capturing lots of interesting textural sounds with percussion. Heaps of fun. Blind search. This one, we're having a bit of a play with bringing in pads and tuned percussion like Tibetan bowls and things like that with a bit of bass flute to kind of make an interesting texture. Here we have vibraphone.
Okay, Bullroarer. So this is more atonal goodness. So sometimes the expression works in quite subtle ways, um, so it's not always going to be hugely ob big obvious changes. So in this case it was, as we move the expression up, you, you're starting to get a very subtle kind of um, metallic swishing noise over the top, which from memory it was probably just like a uh, running a, what do you call it, a, a brush, brush kind of technique over the skin of the drum, which was uh, quite nice. Okay, let's keep looking at the next ones. a bit of a scary one there. Okay, some more tune percussion, crotels. Really atmospheric. Confused lullaby. There's that uh, monster growling in the background. Busty, uh, busty, dusty basement, I should say. So some subtle changes there, but definitely nice and moody.
So a bit of an interesting combo there, a bit of water phone, tune, some tune percussion like the Tibetan bowls, prayer bowls. Okay, so we have low growl. So another atonal uh, preset there. There's just some, lots of different things going on, as you can see here. You've got bowed timpani sounds. We've got um, bass drum kind of growly things and hits and gong swells and brush effects and water phone. Just kind of all those different concoctions. Uh, it really, really is useful. Simple times. Ah, here we are. My lovely little marimba one. This is my, uh, reminds me of kind of a Thomas Newman vibe here. This one I really love, it's quite simple. I mean, it's just a nice mellow marimba hit combined with some different bows. So we're bowing the actual, each note of the marimba and it just has this nice organic kind of um, warm yet with a little bit of grain added to the sound. It really is quite moody. And just hearing each note just ring out, it, it's quite lovely. So kind of slower passages that just let things kind of just sink in, let the moments of those sounds just kind of sink in. It really is quite pretty. Okay, subtle ripples. So it's kind of similar-ish to the uh, the previous one, except we're using the the vibes and some other kind of nice little swelly things going on there. Okay, another atonal thing. with the roll so we sampled uh, the range the note range of the temp so you've you can actually do some interesting stuff with those more atonal
that one there is a velocity is triggered by velocity so there's actually no expression I just realized the temple also another velocity one So this one we sampled some also little repeated ding 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 kind of techniques. So having those subtly in the background really adds a little bit of ambience. And water spirit. The interesting thing about the water phone is you actually put water into this uh, big percussive instrument which has lots of little kind of rods all around the outside where you can tap or bow and as you move the whole instrument around so you give it a bow and then you move it the water's kind of you know splashing around on the inside and you're it's creating these interesting warpy kind of effects so you get the whoa 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 kind of sounds that's so you can, if you, you can kind of hear that there so that's really really fun so look this was a, a a bit of a rundown on a handful of many of the many presets so there's a lot more there we would be would spend a, too long to go through it all but i'd just like to show you one last thing before we finish our little video here uh so if i just go back into here one thing I just want to really make clear about this instrument is that there's more to it than just the global presets. If you kind of dive deep, you'll truly understand the sheer wealth of content. So let's just do a little example here. Let's turn off all these and we'll just look at this water phone. What I'm going to do here, I want to start from scratch and we can click on the technique and we'll just do this here, clear layer. I'm going to clear everything, okay? So we've just got an empty water phone. We'll click here, and then you can see all these techniques that we have. We've got atonal, so you can search by atonal or tonal techniques. So um, the water phone by nature is quite atonal. It's a hard beast to control. Not a lot of people have actually sampled it in a tonal way. Um, <laughs> I can understand why, because it's an absolute uh, chore. But we got there in the end, so uh, we tortured ourselves for your own uh, creative enjoyment. So you've got things like uh, we sampled here. Uh, we can load just a straight thing. So that there is like a sustain, random bowed sustain with uh, these random glisses where you kind of run your bow a little bit around the, the other rods of the instrument and back to the root note again. So that just alone, that technique is, is really, really cool. Um, you can use your virtual soundstage here to make it closer.
So that is quite handy if you want to adjust the mix. Obviously there's a lot more there, like I mean you have all these kind of atonal ones. Kind of like a full sustaining gliss. So there's, a re there's really a lot. And then if we just look here and bring these back, like metal percussion, if we just go here, you can kind of see, well, you know, how many different articulations we've got there. Um, low percussion, same deal. You kind of see how many different articulation. There's a ton there. Uh, let's just turn these little beasties off. Go back here. We'll change the instrument. So if we're looking at even, say, ambient guitar, I'll just load any old thing. It doesn't really matter. And then we'll just delete. If you want to start from scratch, just delete your layers and then click. And you can kind of see some different things that we've got there. You've got delays. You've got trim growl. Let's say this one. So that's cool. I mean, there's a lot there. We can't really go through everything now, but I'm just trying to give you a sense of the possibilities. Okay, let's look at the kind of like, say, female choir. Let's just load any old thing. Uh, we'll delete all the layers there, clean slate. Then you can kind of see here, you've got your random Latin, random gliss. Let's so load something there. You can kind of see if we change the mix here. So you really can get quite uh, nice and close or roomy and cinematic. It's quite versatile. A lot of different things. We've got your trills. So lots of uh, tonal possibilities. If I click on tonal, you can see. So all these are, you know, full range, playable articulations. And then we've got a handful of nice, interesting atonal ones too. And then same again, if we click on say male choir, it's pretty much a replica of the female choir techniques. There might be, I think there may have been one more technique possibly, but you can see all those there. You know, you can go Ooh, bend. So a lot of different interesting options, even just hearing the, the, like the global presets are wonderful hearing these kind of blends of different sounds, but there really is some beauty just to the singular instrument articulation. I think that when you really dig in and start to play with these sounds, you'll, you'll discover a lot of creative ideas where you might just even only want to use one instrument group and one articulation and just kind of work within that it really is quite handy and then you can kind of look, say look at the cello click on there let's get rid of all that look once again we'll check the tonal so you've got all these different kind of tonal articulations say like major trill flicker let's click on that
I really love hearing the strings when you bring them closer in the mix. You get to hear that kind of rosiny sound and the detail in the flicker. It's, it's very, very nice. So as you can see, there's a lot of different articulations. We actually extended the range. It normally doesn't go down that low, but it can be kind of fun, you know, just to have that little bit of room. But if you want to be uh, natural, then you kind of want to stick to the C1 and up, which is its true range. That was more of a bonus extension. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot, like low brass. Let's just very quickly have a run through, just look at some of the stuff, not actually play now, I'll just show you so you get a bit of a sense. So you've got all these different types of articulations, tonal, and a few little atonal, and once again French horn, same sort of deal, you've got lots of uh, lovely sounds there to play with. You go into here, you can kind of see different sorts of things. So if I just kind of, I mean, look, if we grab that, have a quick, you can hear a note or two. So that's, you know, there's lots of really, really playable sounds there. Then we've got, uh, it's a choir, obviously we've got all the strings, the bass flute, lots of interesting articulations in there. Kind of see all these things here, which is great. Really, really handy things. And then tune percussion. Kind of see if we click on here, we sampled... Um, we get to see we've got Crotel, Marimba, Tibetan Bowls and Vibes. And then within there you've got some different articulation groups. And these are really, really playable, beautiful sounds. And Waterphone we've seen, low winds, you know, similar to the low brass, but for the low winds. We have uh, pads and SFX, so if I load pads here. So you've got all these different types of pads, so if we just clicked on any one of those. So a big thank you to the talented Jonathan Sharp there for creating these beautiful sounds <clears throat> and as you could hear there I was playing with the uh, virtual sound stage so we could make the pads go further back in the room or closer so depending on the kind of feel that you wanted. So the pads have a lot of really interesting sounds so I, I think one of the key things we wanted to do there is to make them uh, blend well with the organic sounds. That was the number one key R internal rule that we made. We just didn't want to make pads that sounded amazing by themselves, but not really useful in blending with the other sounds. So we wanted like, uh, I guess, team player pads, you know, the pads that work well with everybody else. And that was kind of the key with these ones. And I'm really, really proud of what Jonathan has created. I think they're beautiful, beautiful work here. And just quickly show you that with the SFX, I'll just load that, get rid of these wee ones. And you can see here we've got a lot of nice atonal SFX. So um, another good friend of mine, Joseph Veal, he, uh, he lives in New Zealand and he's a Foley artist and he went round and recorded a lot of interesting environmental sounds, you know, the ocean and the wind and other cool, even weird electrical noises from fridges and 
anything that seemed interesting and creative. And then he sent us all this, all these raw, raw audio. And then Jonathan jumped in and did his magic and turned them into something really different and interesting. So if I clicked on something here. Some really interesting stuff there. And as you can see, just by changing the position in the room, you can go for something that's quite in your face and a little bit more aggressive sounding to something that's a little bit more kind of, um, I guess, smoother sounding, which is which could be definitely handy when mixing in with other sounds where you want something that's a little bit crazy but not so kind of in your face. You can, I mean, that really is a... The whole reamping idea of the pads and SFX was a treat. It really worked out well over the moon with it. So ultimately, we've only covered a small piece of what this instrument can do. It really has a lot of quality, inspiring sounds that I uh, I know 100% I'll be using a lot of my own compositional work. So I'm sure whoever gets their hands on this lovely little instrument will have a tremendous amount of fun. We've spent months working on it. I mean, I've in injected maybe <laughs> eight, nine months of my life creating this instrument. And I know myself and the rest of the team who worked really, really hard on it, we're truly proud and I hope that you all will enjoy it. So thanks for sticking with me and enjoy. Take care.